Malaysia supports Indonesia in tackling haze problem. Three armed robbers killed in shootout with the cops. Good afternoon. Welcome to News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Malaysia will support Indonesia in any way possible that is fit in tackling the haze problem. Minister of Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change, Yul B. Yin, said Malaysia had already conveyed the message to Indonesia. However, up until now, there has been no such request. Sekarang yang paling penting untuk uh, cloud seeding uh, sekarang kita tengok cloud seeding cloud seeding adalah sementara saja dia sementara relief saja sikit saja yang paling penting adalah uh, pihak Indonesia kalau kita boleh masuk juga pihak kita semua perlu memadamkan api dengan secepat mungkin itu adalah keutamaan sekarang supaya untuk mengatasi masalah uh, jerubu ini she said this when met after a special cabinet meeting on shared prosperity at Perdana Putra. Yul said since ASEAN presently did not have any Transboundary Haze Act at the regional level, the enforcement in relation to the haze problem had to be dealt with according to the individual country. Identity cards or my cards and birth certificates to foreign nationals is treason. A serious crime against the country. Home Minister Tan Sri Mudin Yassin said the ministry would not compromise with any quarters who had directly or indirectly conspired in this crime. In his Facebook posting, he said he had instructed the National Registration Department or NRD Director General to give full cooperation to the Royal Malaysia Police, PDRM, and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, in the investigations of such cases. Tan Sri Muhyiddin also advised the public to follow the right procedures in obtaining the documents and never to try to get it through the illegal channels. Members of the public with information on the syndicate involved in the illegal issuance of the documents are requested to channel the information to the police. His posting came in response to the arrest of 20 individuals, including a senior NRD officer for allegedly involvement in the issuance of my card and birth certificate illegitimately. On Thursday, six people, including an assistant director of the Pulau Pinang NRD and a businessman with a Dato title, were charged in separate sessions courts in Pulau Pinang with 32 counts of offences in connection with the issuance and sale of my cards to foreigners. Now, the government welcomes suggestions and fresh ideas from the main players in the country's distributive trade sector to bring about policy changes and initiatives. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail said several innovative suggestions have been proposed by the industry players, including relooking at the, distrib at the distribution centre format, the retail floor area and business operation hours. Penciptaan dan juga penggunaan terutamanya dengan perkembangan pantas e-dagang, e-commerce dan konsep sektor terkini yang berubah daripada konsep tradisional dan konvensional. Contohnya, IKEA telah membuka store kecil pertama bersaiz 1,600 meter persegi di New York pada tahun 2018 dan bercadang untuk membuka 30 lagi store kecil di kawasan bandar. She said this in conjunction with Aeon's 35th anniversary dinner last night. The text of her speech was read out by Water, Land and Natural Resources Minister Dr. Xavier Jayakumar. The three men believed to have been involved in a series of armed robberies in Selangor were killed in a shootout with the police at Kilometre 22 Jalan Rawang, heading towards Batu Arang at 5am yesterday. Selangor Police Chief Datuk Nur Azam Jamaluddin said a team from the Selangor Police Contingent Criminal Investigations Department and the Gombak District Police Headquarters or IPD who were on crime patrol at Banda Country Homes in Rawang came across the suspects who were behaving suspiciously in a Volkswagen Polo car. He said police approached the car to conduct checks, but the driver sped off, which led to a seven-kilometer chase before the car crashed. 
tiga orang suspek ah tiga orang suspek Uh, dua di sebelah kanan kenderaan tersebut dan satu sebelah kiri dan uh, pihak kami telah terdengar beberapa das tembakan telah dilepaskan uh, ekoran daripada uh, tindak balas pihak kami telah pihak polis telah melepaskan uh, lebih kurang dalam enam das tembakan uh, ke arah suspek tersebut dan telah berjaya menewaskan mereka He said police found two semi-automatic pistols three machetes and face masks at the scene All three suspects have yet to be identified. Preliminary investigations also found the three suspects were believed to have been involved in several armed robberies in Rawang, Batu Arang and Kundang. The case is being investigated under Section 307 of the Penal Code. And we've got news from the Malaysian Cup in the sports segment today. And we begin with Perak's win over Pahang on home ground. Muhammad Sharil Fikri Mafauzi bagged a brace to help Perak to a 3-1 win over Pahang. And in the process, kept the Bosgaro squad on the right track to secure a quarterfinal berth in the 2019 Malaysia Cup. In the Group C game at the Perak Stadium in Ipoh last night, both the national forwards' goals were headers and scored in quick succession just before the break. Brazilian import Ronaldo Henrique Silva gave the opener when he scored in the 31st minute. The quick succession goals were in the 45th minute, followed by the second a minute later, to put Perak 3-0 comfortably ahead. Group leaders Pahang, who had already secured their quarterfinal spot, reduced the deficit with a consolation goal through Namibian forward Lazarus Kaimbi in the 86th minute. The home win puts Perak in second spot with eight points, leaving closest challenger Pulau Pinang three points behind after Manzor Azwira Abdulwahid's side lost 2-0 to Sabah in the other Group C game played at the Lika Stadium in Kota Kinabalu. Second division champions Sabah secured their first win of the 2019 Malaysia Cup to puncture Pulau Pinang's hopes of a place in the quarterfinals. It was Sabah's first three points of the campaign in a game. Maxis Musa's scramble 54th minute goal gave Sabah the initiative. Crucially, Casagrande missed a 63rd minute penalty for the visitors. The win was secured by Rado Paunovic's 13th goal of the season, second in the Malaysia Cup in the 82nd minute. Pulau Pinang must now beat defending champions Perak by three goals when the teams meet at Pulau Pinang City Stadium on Wednesday night if they are to progress to the knockout stage of the competition. The fight for the two quarterfinal spots from Group D, meanwhile, got more intense after Melaka, Slango and Felder United all found themselves with seven points each, with just one remaining game left. At the Shah Alam Stadium, Slango were tied to another draw, their third in succession after being held one all at home by Melaka. Momakiro Muhaimin Zambri had the home fans cheering after putting Slango ahead in the 38th minute, but that joy was short-lived after Melaka mid Fielder Saiful Rizwan Slamat equalized three minutes after the break. Felder United, meanwhile, secured three valuable points after edging PDRM 1 0 in a tightly contested match at the Tun Abdul Razak Stadium in Junker. Former national winger S. Chanturu was the hero of the fighters' squad with the only goal of the game in the 59th minute, which kept his team chances alive for a quarter final berth. The game, however, was marred by the two red cards shown on PDRM player Patrick Ronaldinho and Felder United forward K. Ikeda. Despite their latest defeat and being at the bottom of the group, PDRM still have a mathematical chance of qualifying for the last eight, provided they win their last match against Malacca next Wednesday. The Olympic Council of Malaysia, OCM, is still awaiting a response from the country's karate queen, Shakila Salni Jeffrey Krishnan, after her name was not in the voting list for the Karate One Premier League in Tokyo, Japan. Its president, Datuk Sri Norza Zakaria, said he would discuss with the National Sports Council's Director General, Datuk Ahmad Shapawi Ismail, to find out what had happened. Uh, saya uh, berharap bahawa uh, perkara ini uh, boleh diselesaikan secepat mungkin supaya kita dapat uh, membuat persediaan yang baik uh, terutamanya uh, uh, Shakila merupakan uh, sandaran atau harapan kita uh, pada Olimpik yang akan datang. 
Datuk Sri Norza was met at the 2019 Sports Writers Association of Malaysia or SAM 10-pin bowling competition last night. On another development, Datuk Sri Norza said he is fully backing the move for weightlifting to be included in the list of events in the Malaysia Games or Sukma in Johor next year. He said the doping issue involving several weightlifters before this should not be made a reason to drop the sport from the biennial Games. And that's it from us this afternoon. In our top story, Malaysia supports Indonesia in tackling the haze problem. Join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Jessica Lee. Have a good weekend.